Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Bomber 7813HD-640 Heavy Duty Double Acting Spring Pivot Non Hold Open in an oil rubbed bronze finish. This is um, 7813 is is classified as heavy duty because the spring uh, is such that it is rated for a 150 pound door. With a lighter duty I could rotate that completely by hand but it's it's very difficult with with the heavy duty version. Uh, so this is a double acting pivot, adjustable spring tension, non-hold open for doors inch and three eighths to inch and three quarter thick there is a link below this video to what is called the template, which also for Bomber acts as um, installation instructions, really. So I'm going to show you the rest of the pieces first, and we'll go through the installation one by one. 640 means oil rub bronze. And you're going to get two of these plates. There's two of them. I'll just show you one. They're identical. And they are to mount over the cutout in the door that you do. Okay. You'll then have this heel plate, which mounts over the edge of the door. You'll have the top pivot assembly. This item is available separately as well. I think it's a part number 7830 by Bomber. Portion that goes in the uh, header, and the portion that goes in the top of the door. Tension rod for setting the uh, spring tension, screws for holding the body onto the uh, bottom of the door, and then all the screws necessary for attaching all the uh, all the um, exposed hardware itself. So if you would at this time open up the template, <coughs> I'll link below this video and we'll kind of go through. Um, in my opinion it's very, it's straightforward in the sense that it's a very digestible to do this. Although the first time you're going to machine the wood door for this, I'd like to just talk about a couple of um, tips or, or you know, uh, ideas that might make it a bit easier. First of all, you're doing a double acting door, so that means the styles of the door will have to be radiused. They'll have to have a radiused edge to them. Think of the top row of tile in your bathroom. That's a bull nose. Imagine if you did a bull nose all the way over the edge. That would be called a radius. You've got to have a radius. Otherwise, if this, if my hand, my palm is the frame and my fist is the door, if you don't radius the edge over, the door is going to get buried into the jam because of the margins that are indicated between the jam and the edge of the door. Uh, as you can see on the template, they would be far too tight of a margin if you didn't radius the door over. Now you could get by in not doing that by increasing the margin everywhere, but that would make for an, a very unsightly gap between the jam and the edge of the door. This stuff is radiused edges. Inch and a half radius is what they're calling out for. Okay, you can't have a radius smaller than your door thickness because your door would still bottom out. Okay, inch and a half radius. And how that's accomplished is the way that I've done it in the past is I would take the door and put it on my workbench or my sawhorses. I would have a router with a large round over bit. Okay, three inch diameter. So it's a huge round over bit. And I would you know, for in a shop setting, if you're doing this sort of preparation all the time, I took a router base and modified the bottom of it with a large cutout so that my co my round over bit with the ball bearing guide on the bottom was at the proper um, depth for an inch and three quarter door. And I would just put that on the edge of the door and I'd run it all the way down and make, you know, you're really only going to make one pass and then one more to clean it up. I would then take the door and flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Um, you know, you're not using a B 
speed bit or whatever the proper f uh, name would be for a concave sort of bit. You know, you would just do it one side at a time. Once you've accomplished a radius on both styles, the pivoting style and the opposite style, you'll then really be able to proceed with machining the door per the template for the top pivot assembly. Really, this is really easy to do. Uh, 7 8 diameter is what they're calling out for this in the jam. I would, I have used a Forstner bit, 7 8 diameter, and I would just then drill it three times. The center of this hole, the center of this hole, and the center of this hole, since they're all 7 8 And I would just hit that three times in the door. And a Forstner bit being flat bottom bottomed, I had to do very little, I had to do no work to it. Um, do the same for the plate that goes in the, in the top of the door. That makes very quick and easy work. Per the template, you're going to be at, uh, you know, an inch and a half radius, an inch and a half from the edge of the door to the center of this hole. The sorry, the center of this hole. The bottom, the, prepping the bottom of the door, and by the way, the inch and a half radius is exactly what the heel plate is at as well. So you're going to want those to, you know, obviously to match up that heel plate, inch and a half radius. M uh, machining the bottom of the door for this big assembly is really a lot easier than it looks. The first time I did this, what seems like a hundred years ago, make this flush with the bottom, make this basically flush with the edge, and then make the rest of it fit, and, and that's basically all of the machining. Um, there is, on, there will be a template included with the hardware and it's all shown down here. Okay, it's very easy, very straightforward. All of the dimensions are there with the one exception that I'm seeing on the link is that this pin in the, in the top will travel. Now, you can somewhat see the idea that it'll travel so you'll have to mortise a small inside cavity in the bottom of the door called a groove, shown here. Okay, right there, for that pin to travel as the door, you know, opens and closes. The dimensions are all there. I won't beleaguer all the dimensions uh, here because all that information is there. The screws are included to attach it. After you get everything machined, and not to skip ahead, but you've got the top, you've got the styles radiused, you've got the top of the door machined, you've got the jam machined. Now you've got this fitted and attached to the bottom of the door, and that would be with the zinc colored screws, okay, that are included. There's one finished screw in there, and that would be for the heel plate, uh, you know, finished to match. Which is going to install to the tapped hole that's in the edge. Basically, your plate, you know, goes like that. Well, get my fingers out of the way there. It's going to look like that, you know, in the edge, except that you'll have obviously two plates. And I've just got the other plate on my desk here. It'll look like that. After everything's machined, you've got all the hardware attached. You're going to tip the door into, into the opening as shown in this step five. Mark your holes in the floor for these four holes. Take your door out, drill your holes, put it back in and secure it down. After that, you're going to attach your floor plates, your uh, cover plates. Attach your heel plate and then you're, you're done. This is up to a 150 pound door. If your door is significantly lighter than this, this is going to be the wrong pivot for you because the spring is too heavy, so to speak. Your tension rod to set your spring tension is here. You can see right here, tension rod goes in there and you basically just crank that over. From the factory, it's going to be on the lightest setting. And the more I do that, the greater compressed this spring will become allowing you to set the 
uh, spring tension according to how rapidly you want the door to open, com uh, you know, compared with the weight of the door, of course, and the size. Three foot doors, anything wider than that, this is the wrong kind of hardware for. Um, I have personally seen these pivots installed in especially residential applications for decades. These things just don't fall apart. Um, you know, in a in 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 a application that they're intended for, hold open version is available for this, the medium and the light duty as well. So Bomber in their 7800 series, you'll have your light duty like your 7801, your medium duty like a 7811, then your heavy duty like a 7813, available as hold open and non hold open. So review that stuff if you're not sure, because there's a guideline to the maximum door weight for all of those in the website. And of course, um, different finishes are available. Uh, great quality product, this here bomber stuff. You're not going to be able to see it, but the bomber logo is down in here. And right above that logo, it says Made in USA, a fact that Bomber is quite proud of, as am I to represent them. Good quality products by even better quality people. If you have any questions on the Bomber 7813 HD 640. Double acting, heavy duty, non hold open, spring, pivot, or any other bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.